What is going on everyone? Welcome to another very exciting episode right here on the My Gardener channel. Well, it is the proudest moment of any plant parent's life, graduation day. So we've been growing these lettuce plants underneath these lights for about the past month and a half now, and they are looking great. But I don't wanna just keep growing them underneath these lights because one thing that you'll notice is as the, the leaves get larger, some of the leaves underneath tend to get limp and, and wilty, and I wanna grow full heads of lettuce. Now you can grow full heads of lettuce underneath grow lights, but not this densely. They're gonna need a lot more space to kind of fill out. So we're actually gonna move them out into the greenhouse where they can kind of live out the rest of their life. All right, let's go. All right, so we're out in the greenhouse and I'll tell you, it feels amazing right now. It's probably, I don't have a, a temperature in front of me, but it's probably close to I'd say like 75, 80 degrees in here. It feels really, really nice. But uh, we we're just kind of breaking up. I did bring some soil in. Um, I'm using Pro Mix for today uh, and it was frozen because I had it outside, but I'm just kind of breaking it up and getting it ready. Uh, the next thing that I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be amending it. If you are transplanting lettuce, the first thing I think uh, is worth noting is that they do like lots of nitrogen because they are kind of a leaf crop. They use lots of nitrogen. You're definitely gonna wanna supplement with lots and lots of nitrogen. Again, we're using Trifecta Plus, 5104, 5% nitrogen, 10% phosphorus, 4% potassium. However, uh, the nitrogen that's in there is both fast acting and slow release. So it's gonna basically act and, and be drug out throughout the entire life of the lettuce plant, which is great. Um, it also has, uh, the Promix has mycorrhiza inoculated inside, but so does Trifecta. And also has trace minerals and beneficial bacteria like uh, Azospirillium and Lactobacillus and uh, lots of other beneficial bacteria that are really good to have in your soil. So I like to add that to, uh, to my mix. And these chunks really shouldn't matter too much. As soon as I water them, the, the frost inside the chunks will kind of just disintegrate. So I'm gonna throw it right in the bags, chunky and all, and it'll kind of just settle out. So, all right, got that. The next thing I was gonna say too, a lot of people ask me is container size. So when you're growing lettuce in containers, you can actually crowd them. They like to be crowded. They don't, uh, they don't get as pretty of a head, but you can grow a lot of plants in a small space. And in our garden, in our raised beds, when we grow uh, in our raised beds at our house, we call it high intensity spacing. And high intensity spacing basically means that in like a three foot row, we might have 20 to 30 plants in that little three foot row. And so it's highly, it's, you know, it's very dense, highly planted, and that allows us to maximize the space that we have because lettuce doesn't really mind it. All right, so this is a whole wheelbarrow full. So I'm just gonna basically do about a quarter cup per gallon, roughly. So for this entire wheelbarrow, I might do about, I'd say maybe like four cups, five cups. And that might be, that might be under what uh, like a quarter cup per gallon would be, but that seems about right for this wheelbarrow. So I'm gonna add about four cups of fertilizer. Each fistful is like about a, uh, about a half a cup. And I'm gonna mix this in really well. All right, so now we're filling up the pots here. I really love to use fabric pots just because of the fact that they're lightweight, they collapse when I'm done using them, I can store them easily, and you got really nice handles. So uh, if I'm lugging around the, the pots, they're easy to hold so I don't drop them and stuff like that. The thing I was gonna mention with lettuce is lettuce have fairly shallow root systems. These five gallon pots here uh, are not my preference. I'd prefer to go with like a three gallon pot if possible because they're gonna be a little bit shorter. And uh, I could still fit about three to four plants in a three gallon pot, about the same as I can a five gallon pot. So what I'm gonna do is I will roll the sides down. And the reason why I'm doing that is just so I don't have to use as much soil because you really won't need it. I'll tell you, I always see people that they always are, are so concerned and it's, it's a justified concern, but they're so concerned about having enough soil. And I see them uh, filling up a raised bed that's like 24 inches high, two feet high. And granted, if you're someone that's trying to kind of preserve your back or you're older or you can't bend, maybe you're disabled, that's 100% fine. But there are a lot of people, and I was 
kind of in this camp when I first started gardening too, that thought the deeper the soil, the better. When in fact, it's really not the case. Most plants, I'd say like probably 98% of the plants you're ever gonna grow, don't need anything two feet deep. Um, you could take the deepest burrowing carrot and it's still maybe about like 12 to 13 inches. And that's a very, very long carrot. And that's the, you know, how long the taproot is. Um, tomatoes, if you, uh, if you plant a tomato plant, you might get roots that go down about a foot or so, maybe 11, 12 inches, and they really don't penetrate that much further. And so uh, I find that in like a five gallon smart pot for lettuce, lettuce really only need six to eight inches of soil. So we're just filling up the last pot here and that should do it. Right, so now I'm gonna take them over here. I'm actually gonna place them, I've been placing them in a very kind of strategic uh, orientation here and you'll kind of see uh, the method behind my madness when I describe this, but essentially what we're doing is we are setting up basically a set it and forget it irrigation system using just the natural condensation and humidity in the greenhouse. This is really incredible. So what I noticed with the greenhouse is there was very specific creases all along this ridge here and on the other side as well to where the condensation, the humidity would come and it would condensate on these little cracks and then uh, the, the drips of water would drip down and make these little lines. And it was quite literally like drip irrigation. No, you know, there's no, uh, there's no water being, uh, being you know, fed. It's just water from the ground that's coming up. It's actually evaporating, creating condensation and then re-dripping back down. It's the water cycle literally in, a, in basically a vacuum here. And so, um, so what, we're, what we've done is just taken two, basically the length of the drip lines that are coming right here We've taken them and basically spaced out our smart pots. So that way we could plant the lettuce and the lettuce are gonna be getting, basically getting a continuous drip of water basically all, all the time as long as there's uh, water there. So as long as this is a free resource, I'm gonna take advantage of it because we could literally just go, leave for a couple weeks and I think they'd be fine. So as you can see this uh, little line here, this is actually where we're kind of orienting the smart pots because um, you probably saw that drip right there, but uh, this line right here is where that, that condensation is dripping. And basically you're gonna be getting a continuous stream of water in just drip form, which is great for plants because they're not gonna get overwatered and uh, they're gonna get just the right amount of water and we don't have to do anything about it. All right, so we're planting up the lettuce here and what we're doing is we're basically planting out by variety because we have three different varieties. And I like to kind of, if I'm planting them together in a close, proximity, I like to plant the same varieties together. That way they don't kind of uh, get all jumbled up. So they're kind of gonna keep the same growth habits. Uh, we have here a iceberg head lettuce. Look at that, absolutely beautiful iceberg. Then we have a Grand Rapids leaf lettuce. Super beautiful, nice big, almost kind of like a romaine, but it's still kind of a leaf lettuce. And then we have a, then we have a Great Lakes crisp head. And this is basically almost like, uh, like an iceberg meets a romaine. Really, really cool. So um, we've got three different kinds of lettuce. And let me show you the roots on here. These are so healthy. They're ready to be transplanted. They were, they were actually begging to be transplanted, but uh, it just got warm enough here for us to transplant out in the greenhouse. And look at those beautiful roots. I just watered these so the plugs came out nice and whole. They didn't break away or, or crumble, but you'll notice how white those roots are. That is super, super healthy. It's a great sign to see. What that shows me is I have good oxygen in the root system, in the, you know, in the growing medium. It's not kind of anaerobic and, and holding on to, you're kind of holding on to water too long and stuff like that. Also the fact that the bottom of the root system is nice and white tells me they're not sitting in water, which is great. That, you know, that's a sign there might be some root rot if you see brown roots and stuff like that. But these roots are incredibly healthy, very, very happy. And uh, we're gonna move them into these smart pots here. Again, I'm planting three per pot. You might think, wow, that seems like they're really crowded, but they're gonna have so much room to move their roots down. 
And because we've fertilized very heavily with trifecta, it's gonna give them all the fertility they're gonna need. So they're not gonna be competing for space. They have lots of room going down. They're not gonna be competing for water. They're gonna have plenty of water. They're not gonna be competing for sunlight because they're out here in the sun. They're nice and nice and open. Um, they're not gonna be competing for, uh, for nutrients because we've given them lots of nutrients. And so um, basically we've taken care of all of their needs all in one. And so we can plant, um, I mean, you could have started in this space here, you could have started five, 10 lettuce plants from seed or three plants uh, if you're starting from starts like we are. And that's just gonna give you an incredible start to, uh, to your garden. All right, so we're gonna transplant up some other lettuce here. These ones did not make it into larger containers. They still look pretty good, but I wanted to get them out into the greenhouse where they could kind of spread their wings, but they are quite a lot more root bound, still nice, beautiful white roots. Again, I can only attribute that to having good quality seed starting mix. Talk about that all the time. But uh, the next thing I wanted to talk about was the importance of understanding temperature control. So when you're growing lettuce like this, a lot of people, they, you know, they don't really consider temperature in early season. When you're growing in a greenhouse like this, it's really important that you dial in the temperature. Now, if you're growing outside, obviously you're just, you're beholden to whatever temperature it is that day. However, in here, we need to make sure that we're regulating the sides to go up after it hits about 75 degrees. We do not want it to get warmer than 75 degrees in here because if it does, the lettuce is gonna to start to go to seed. The really nice thing about this though is that because it's temperature controlled, the, uh, the, the peaks in the valleys are gonna be a lot less extreme. So if we threw these outside, they may not hardly grow at all because the nighttime temperatures are still in like the you know high 20s or so and that's not really gonna cause them to grow. They might go dormant and just stop growing when the daytime temperatures spike up into the low 40s, still isn't really warm enough to get them growing that fast. And so um, we are very blessed to have this greenhouse, but we just have to know the, to kind of temperature control it and keep that in check. One quick little note that I thought would be kind of nice to mention about growing in a greenhouse in early season like this is the lack of pests. Now, when you're looking at growing in a garden, we combat things all the time, like white flies, spider mites, aphids, dogs that are barking. Uh, <laughs> and the nice thing is that, you know, aside from the dogs that bark, everything else is dormant. And so uh, the, you know, the white flies, the cabbage moths, the caterpillars, you know, cucumber beetles, you name it. If you can grow in a greenhouse in early season like this, you cut down on the amount of pests by like 90 to 95%, which is awesome. Now, if you are planting outside, obviously, like I said, that's much less of a concern, but lettuce don't like to be in anything warmer than 75 degrees. So just keep that in mind. The nice thing I will say about growing in containers though, is it allows you to move the containers. Now, this is something you can't do in raised beds and something that I've really come to love with growing in containers is a lettuce like this or any leafy green that doesn't like warm temperatures. What do you do if it gets warm? Well, you pick it up move it to a shady spot. And so, yeah, it's not gonna be getting sunlight, but it's also not gonna be getting beat on with really, you know, really hot, bright, direct sun. And so, um, you know, that's one of the nice things about growing in containers. The final thing that I thought I'd mention when growing lettuce in containers is that a lot of people, they make the mistake of, uh, they make the mistake of uh, basically overwatering. Now, we talked about watering with these drip lines here and how the, the natural condensation that's dripping down should be enough to water these. A lot of people think that because they're in a container that they need to regularly water because, well, the container dries out a lot faster. This is true, but lettuce is one that really does not like to be overwatered at all. You'll find that you get root rot very quickly on lettuce and it'll let you know very fast. And so I don't want you to make that mistake. I like to, oh man, look how root bound that one was, wow. Um, I like to water my lettuce I would say about once a week. I don't water it that much, even in containers here. I'd say this lettuce in these containers, I maybe only watered it about once a week or so, and that's in these teeny tiny little cell packs. It's gonna be no different here. And I really shouldn't have to water very much at all because they're gonna be getting continuous drip water from up above. But um, don't overwater your lettuce. Don't overwater your lettuce, especially in containers. All right, so we're just kind of finishing up here and uh, we got all these pots planted out with the same variety and we're kind of left with what I call the scraps. So there's kind of just, it's kind of a smorgasbord pot, but that's okay because this is the biggest pot we have here. This is the, I believe this is a 15 gallon pot and uh, it's really nice because it allows me to grow a ton of lettuce in this pot here. Now, 
Again, it's a smorgasbord, so there's some, uh, there's a little bit of bib butterhead. Here's uh, an iceberg. I have a rouge de heaver. Uh, a lot of these, we do germination testing to make sure we have super high quality seed. So when our seed comes in from our farmers, a lot of times we'll do germination testing. If they don't do it for us, we do it so we ensure that we have really high quality seed. And uh, when those seeds germinate, every once in a while I look at them and I'm like, I, I can't throw you out. So I take the little seedlings and I move them into pots because I'm a plant freak like that. So uh, yeah, so we got a kind of a smorgasbord of random plants we're just throwing in here. And it's nice because with this bigger pot, it allows us to grow a whole lot more plants. Um, that being said, a lot of people always ask me, and if you heard that, that's the, that's the vents. Those are the louvers opening up because it got warm enough again to open up. So that's the temperature regulation we talked about. It's super, super important to growing uh, lettuce, especially like leafy greens that are temperature sensitive in a greenhouse like this. So that means it's working. Um, but a lot of people ask me about soil. Soil is very important when growing in containers. Now, again, I said we're using pro mix. That's kind of just a ready-made mix. You can make your own mix. We have videos on how to do that, but you want to make sure that you go with something that's not going to clump and, and kind of get compacted. Containers have a tendency to get compacted more than your soil does because of the fact that the outside will kind of have a tendency to dry out a little bit. And when that happens, it, it shrinks because uh, moist soil expands, dry soil shrinks. And over time, that expansion and contraction has a tendency to kind of compact the soil. So to eliminate that, um, you use a lot of perlite and vermiculite, even if you're using compost, make sure you're adding a little bit of perlite and vermiculite in there to kind of break it up. I see oftentimes a lot of people get concerned with you know, what type of soil to buy. Really the biggest thing is just having that perlite and the vermiculite. Anything else, there's nuanced differences. There's good soil, there's slightly less good soil, but there really isn't like terrible, terrible soil out there. You have to try pretty hard to get terrible soil. And so go with what fits in your budget. You know, try, uh, try different brands, try different, uh, you know, different bags of stuff and really see what works for you because what works for me might not work for you. And so um, I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you learned something new. If you did, make sure to throw a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and comment down below with something that you enjoyed from this episode. Now, the other thing, finally, I was gonna mention too, is if you wanna get some seeds, make sure you go check out amigardener.com. Obviously, having healthy plants starts with having healthy seeds. We have the highest quality seeds I can possibly uh, imagine. You know, we're gardeners first, taking care of gardeners. So uh, when it comes to quality, we care a lot. Uh, but as always, I hope you guys enjoyed and grow bigger.